It's about 4.30 a.m. Been dealing with an unstable bleeding patient in the ER. For some reason I'm not that tired, but I am starving. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the vlog. It is another beautiful day in New York City, and it's actually beautiful today because, because it's not flaming hot like it has been the last, I don't know, a week or so. It's a pretty good day. I'm over here on the west side at the hospital, close to the Hudson River right now. We've got some Starbucks here. Just had our first procedure canceled this morning because the patient decided to eat a nice hearty breakfast. Walking around New York City for a moment because I'm a little frozen. It's still like 60 degrees in the hospital and it's like 65 degrees outside. So I'm trying to find some sunshine where I can eat this until my next procedure. There we go, now we're talking. And I have to admit, I've been a little down on New York City lately, just because, I don't know, it's, I wonder what's actually going to happen in the future with all this COVID stuff and like shutting all the restaurants down. But, but then you have a beautiful day like this and you just walk outside, grab a coffee, grab something to eat. And this is the reason why I love it here. And this is pretty much <laughs> New York in a nutshell. There's just a love-hate relationship with living in New York City. I've mentioned this so many times but this is one of the things I love. And trust me, when it starts getting like fall weather, woo, woo, there is nothing better than fall weather in New York City. Put on a little sweater, put on some jeans, go for a walk. You're not gonna be sweaty like I have been the last few months. That's just part of the reason I love living here. But I don't know if I'll live here forever. We'll see. Yes, it's so funny to me. Well, actually it's not funny. It's kind of terrible that there are still so many healthcare workers that you see outside of the hospital smoking. Like, what are we doing here, people? What? Don't you see enough smoking related illness and disease in the hospital with all the patients you take care of and see? Just don't smoke. You know better of anybody. Please stop. Just like that, we are out of work. And I am in such a good mood because it's absolutely gorgeous outside. And look at this. This is Billionaire's Row up here on 57th Street, right there. I think that's, I forgot which tower that is, but it's one of those huge skyscrapers that they are building for the billionaires because nobody can afford it but them. It overlooks Central Park, it's absolutely crazy. But let me get on this bus. All right, just got off the bus and headed home now. One thing I haven't mentioned to you all is that I'm actually on call this entire week. So I'm actually currently on a seven day stretch of call, but as you can see, I'm a little happier this time around than my last video, which if you haven't seen my 168 hour video on call, I'll link it up here or up here. But essentially, instead of covering one hospital, I'm actually covering three different hospitals on call currently, which is crazy because you'd think that covering three hospitals, I'd get called in more and be doing more stuff than when I was only covering one hospital, but that's actually not the case at all, which is weird. But I was actually called in, let's see, twice or three times the last time I was on call, but this time I wasn't even paid the last two nights. But technically I am on a 168 hour stretch of call, which means when I go home, I still have to answer pages and whatnot. It's just completely different. The caseload over at the West Campus is a little lighter, so I don't do as complex cases and you pretty much go home around 5 p.m. every single day. You do more bread and butter cases like ports nephrostomy tubes on the occasional fibroid embolization, whereas over at main hospital, you're doing very complex cases one after another, which is why you stay there 12, 15 hour plus a day, and then you're on call overnight and get called a ton overnight. It's just completely different. And which is why I'm so happy right now because it's like 5 p.m. I'm headed home. It's absolutely gorgeous outside. Oh, and by the way, Andriana has been in the Hamptons all week while I sit here on call 
which, you know, I figured she wouldn't see me as much this time around, so might as well go hang out in the Hamptons. Uh, she's actually not there for pleasure, she's there for work, and I wish I was there with her because to go to the Hamptons right now on this beautiful day would just be perfect. So anyways, I just wanted to highlight the difference in what call is at different hospitals because I kept getting a lot of questions about how, you know, would I have this kind of call schedule as an attending or would I be going in in the middle of the night as an attending or all that kind of stuff. But it also depends completely on the hospital system that you are working for. And as you can see, even in these two hospitals from the same hospital system, it's markedly different. And that's how pretty much every radiology group will be in private practice as well. Hopefully it'll be more like this side of things where get out at a reasonable time and go in once every now and then for an overnight emergency. So yes, you do want to train somewhere that is completely hectic and full of volume like it is here, but afterwards you want to tone it down a little bit and enjoy your life a little bit because after all, you just worked 14 years of your life and to work like 100 plus hours a week still as an attending would not be ideal. Some people actually like it. I would prefer otherwise. Also, how do you expect me to work 100 plus hours a week and still do YouTube? Because that is technically my part-time job and I still need time for that. So again, I wanna reiterate, fellowship, you have to go in, you have to experience this brutal call, you have to get your caseload up because at the end of the day, it's all about reps, it's repetition, repetition, repetition do the reps, get comfortable with it, make sure all these procedures are a muscle memory, and then you become a good attending. And just like that, the week is over, sort of, because I'm technically still on call. It is now Friday afternoon. It is not as beautiful of a day as it was the other day, because I think it's trying to rain and it's a little windy because of probably all of the hurricane action going on in the southern region of the U.S. So Andriana is finally back at home. Uh-oh. Did the trash piles. You know I love that. Anyways, Andriana is back at home. She got back from the campus late last night. So we didn't really get a chance to hang out with her in the last four or five days or so while she's been away in the Hamptons. So we'll get to have a nice dinner tonight. It hasn't been too bad the last few days. I almost came in on Wednesday night for an emergent GI bleed. But we didn't end up doing that because our friends over in the GI department handled that with a max colonoscopy. So anyways, let's hope the weekend is slow and I get to relax and enjoy it. morning everybody it is Saturday I just got to the hospital right now because I was supposed to do an urgent abscess drainage on a patient but literally on the way over here I was in the uber and they called me and said they're just taking the patient to the OR so I guess I have no procedure to do but I do have to see and round on a few patients so that's what I'm gonna do now it's about 8 a.m. now and I'm going to try to make it home for brunch because Andriana is cooking a nice brunch for all of her friends and I'm just going to go crash it because she only makes these brunches when I'm on call. She has like all of her friends over but I want some brunch too. All right, so if you wanna see how we set up pretty much every basic procedure, I'll show you everything we have on the table right now. So first and foremost, we have some gowns and this is all sterile underneath but we keep the sheet on it and just have it prepared for any other cases. We get a bucket of saline, which is that's where we put all of our wires and all that stuff, usually heparinized saline. We have a cover for the top of the X-ray and the flat panel detector right here, as you can see. Oh wait, that's the cover for the shield over there. This is the cover for the flat panel detector. A whole bunch of syringes, usually the blue 10cc syringes are contrast. We have a short tubing to hook up our flush bag if we're doing arterial or venous work. We have a place where we put all of our sharps. We have a tegoderm, scalpel, lidocaine needle, a various assortment of tools, scissors, needle driver, K9 
Kelly or hemostat marker. Chloroprep is what we prep skin with. Then we have labels for all of our syringes over here. Saline syringes, 20 cc's, gauze or four by fours, towels, clips, ultrasound machine, and that's that. All right, so we just finished rounding at this hospital. Now I'm going all the way across town to round on a few patients at that hospital. And since my procedure got canceled, I have no procedure so far today. And I hope it stays that way because it's the weekend. So now I'm taking an Uber across town to see some more patients. feel bad taking the elevator up one or two floors because I always take the stairs but I don't know these hospitals well enough because I don't spend a lot of time here and therefore I don't know where the stairs are so I always feel bad taking the elevator when I should be taking the stairs all right so currently at hospital two just finished seeing a patient gonna write a note and then honestly get out of here and go grab some brunch all right everybody so I'm officially done with this vlog I guess because I'm essentially done for the day unless I get called in of course and I will bring you along so with that being said thank you all for watching as usual and I'll see you all on the next video So it's about 4.30 a.m. Been dealing with an unstable bleeding patient in the ER for a little bit now. And I thought I was gonna make it in without coming in, but when you're covering three hospitals, you gotta come in at some point. So I have to admit, it's a little eerie being in the hospital this early because also, failed to mention that I've never been in this hospital before, so I have no idea where the interventional suite is. So I'm currently waiting on the IR tech to show me where it is. And as you can see, it is now 8 a.m. It is sunny out, and I just finished. The patient did really well, but now I'm going home. I still have another day of call. For some reason, I'm not that tired, but I am starving. And I'm going home right now to try to get some semblance of some sleep. And hopefully this is pretty much it for this call extravaganza. So I'll see you all this time. Well, not for certain, but I hope it's for certain. I'll see you all on the next video.